Now, you may have heard of the high key or bright and airy color grade before, and as beautiful as this effect may be, it has just two problems. One, it blows out all the precious detail in the highlights, and two, it washes away all the awesome colors in your photo, especially in your model skin tones. But what if I were to tell you that there was a much better way, a best of both worlds technique that allows you to create the stunning bright and airy look, all the whilst retaining and even enhancing the colors in frame. Well, my friends, that's exactly what I'm gonna be teaching you with the bright, airy, and vibrant color grade technique. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So here we are in Photoshop, and as you can see, we have a portrait photo of Francesca, which comes from a recent outdoor natural lighting photo shoot. So with your photo opened up inside Photoshop, let's begin by making a copy of our original raw image by creating a new blank layer, and then hitting Shift plus Command plus Option plus E to create a layer stamp, and then right click it and hit Convert to Smart Object to work non-destructively and then opening this layer in the camera raw filter to begin some crucial foundational adjustments in order to create the bright, airy, and vibrant look. Let's do some basic color corrections by warming up the image by shifting the temperature towards yellow and then removing some of the green tint coming through by shifting this slider to the right. Now, for an important step in building our light and airy color grade, let's increase our exposure to plus 0.4 as well as the highlights and whites. Don't worry if we lose a little bit of detail in the background, this is a normal part of the bright and airy look, just so long as you maintain sufficient detail in your model's skin and clothing. Let's also brighten up and in doing so, add a soft fade to our shadows to further contribute to the bright look of our edit, a common aspect of any bright and airy color grade. But if you want to improve the traditional bright and airy look, then I'd recommend also darkening the blacks so as to maintain high contrast. Now, let's also go ahead and pump up the vibrance and saturation sliders, like so. So, with the baseline of our bright, airy, and vibrant effect complete, now it's time to begin our color grading steps in Photoshop. And so the first thing we want to do is create a selective color adjustment and then sequentially target each of the colors in frame specifically so as to build upon a much more harmonious complementary color palette before we move on to enhancing all of the colors in frame and making them pop. So beginning with the reds, let's go ahead and warm up the specific color group in frame by introducing more yellows and reds. Let's also shift the magenta slider to the left, as doing so will bring our reds perceivably closer to the color orange, which is what we want. By the way, if you want to learn exactly how the selective color tool works in all of its glory, be sure to check out the following video on screen after this video. From here, let's shift our blues closer to the color teal by decreasing the magentas and yellows and increasing the cyans. From here, let's warm up the greens by introducing more yellow and then make them a little more vibrant by pumping up the greens, aka by decreasing the magenta to negative 46. Speaking of magenta, we've also got some of this color appearing on our model's torso. So let's bring this color out even more by clicking into it from the drop down menu and proceeding to increase the warmth of this color by boosting both the reds and yellows, and then simply pumping up the magentas to plus 18. Now, let's make a more targeted selective color adjustment by first clicking into our original photo and going up to Select, Subject, then create a new selective color adjustment and invert the layer mask. With the background selected, let's go ahead and warm up our background reds, yellows, and greens. By targeting the background alone, we will avoid oversaturating our model skin tones, keeping them natural. Let's also add in a hue saturation adjustment layer, then bump up the color saturation, and using a soft black brush, let's remove some of this effect from our model's skin once again, so as to keep the skin tones looking nice and natural. Now I know you aren't seeing massive changes to the colors just yet, but don't worry, big changes are coming in steps to follow. Speaking of steps to follow, before doing anything else, let's create three curves adjustment layers, which we will use to build upon the light and airy aspect of our color grade. And so beginning with the first curves adjustment, which we'll label global tones, let's use the hand picker tool and click into our model's white shirt 
And using the upwards directional key, let's increase the brightness of the highlight tones in our image. Let's click into our second curves adjustment layer and using the hand picker tool once again, this time let's click into our model's face and drag this point downwards so as to ensure that our model's skin tones do not become too faded or washed out with all the brightening. Dragging this point upwards washes out our skin tones, dragging downwards keeps them in check. This is an essential and often overlooked step when creating a light and airy color grade. From here, let's click into our third curves adjustment layer, then click into the layer mask and invert it. Click back into the curves adjustment thumbnail and create a simple S curve to boost the contrast. Then using a soft white brush, let's isolate this adjustment layer to selective parts of our model's body to make our model pop and look more 3D. Increasing the contrast on selective parts of your model's body not only has the effect of boosting your photo's depth, but it also has the indirect effect of boosting color vibrancy, which is exactly what we will be building on and enhancing in the next step. With stage two of the color grade complete, now it's time to ensure that the model's skin is properly cleaned and retouched. Now for the sake of this video, I won't be going into my typical skin retouching process today, but I do have a separate video on the topic, which I'll link on screen now. Alternatively, I do have a full portrait editing and retouching course, which I'll link in the description down below. So with the skin and clothes looking clean, let's create a stamp of all visible underlying layers by creating a new layer and then hitting shift plus command plus option plus E. Now it's time to open up our image once again in the camera raw filter to enhance our colors in frame and really make them pop. And so the first thing we're going to do is scroll down to the color mixer tab and then click on the luminance sub tab to begin brightening up certain colors in frame so as to further build upon our bright and airy color grade. Like so. Next, let's scroll back up to the vibrance and saturation sliders and increase them to restore some of the color lost as a result of the brightening effects we just applied. Let's scroll back down to the saturation sub tab in the color mixer tool so as to get more detailed with our vibrancy enhancements. Remember the reason why we're confidently able to pump up the saturation of our colors in frame is because of all the careful and considerate color refinement we made in stage two. With that done, let's come up to the basic adjustments tab and make some broader color enhancements by cooling off the color temperature and removing some of the harsh, unflattering magenta coming through. Let's scroll back down to the hue sub tab in the color mixer tool and make some more detailed color enhancements in order to bring out our colors in frame to a much more harmonious orange and teal complementary color palette. From here, let's go ahead and decrease the highlights and increase the shadows to reveal even more detail and color in our photo, whilst boosting the whites and decreasing the black point to further increase our photo's contrast, vividness, and punchiness. Hit OK and let's return to Photoshop. Now, when it comes to expanding your photo to fit the 4x5 Instagram crop like I've done here, I actually show you exactly how to do that in tip number 5 of the following video on screen. So guys, if you enjoyed that editing tutorial, then be sure to watch the following video on screen if you want to learn more secrets to creating engaging, eye-catching, and 3D edits that pop. I'll see you inside.